<laughs> hey guys, it is me, Mr. Marcus White. The shout favorite homeboy, JT. And we are the host of the comment section. You see that we have our friend of back on for another episode. Hey, Ahmad. My friend. Hello. hello. Can we just say Ahmad Abercrombie? Is, is, can that be your, like your signature name or do you just want to be just called I was going to say, well, when I worked at Hollister, they called me just Abercrombie. Like, so first and last is fine. I like that. You know what? JT's ex used to call him the um, his last name. So we can do the same thing. Can I say that on the podcast? Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah. It's like a casual, casual, uh, casual conversation you and I would yeah. have. Um, but um, so today's episode is going to be really, really special because it's one of our favorite people's birthdays tomorrow. Let's yeah. do it. One, two, three. Happy birthday, Happy birthday to you. Have you seen the black Happy one? Birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Hey, Happy birthday. You. Happy birthday to <laughs> you. Happy birthday Day to you. Well, you can't say happy birthday happy, to yourself. Uh, happy birthday yeah. to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy. I'm trying to be it. special. Y'all are some haters. I, I'm, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm uh, yes, I'm, I'm gonna say the voice is the voice is angelic. Thank you so much. <laughs> and the face is too, bitch. I hope you can match yes, it one day. You look right? Don't try it. Do not try oh, it on this okay. podcast. All right. Yeah, Do not try it, oh, it on. We were starting out good. We were starting out good. You have the snobbiness of a Mormon, not even knowing you look inbred. Go no, ahead. That's a weak read. That's a weak read. Okay. Anyways, JT, we how can talk about city watchers. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> We are talking about JT. My we God. Are. I was going to say, you said my wheat was reek, so you just read Mary. JT, go ahead. 21. I can, I can, read, I can read her role easily. She's with her, she sleeps with her grandfather. Her child <laughs> actually is by her grandfather. That's the real inbred of Salt Lake City. Let's be honest. That's what Heather should have said. When Heather got called inbred, your child's inbred. Your child's by your grandfather. Make it make sense. How is that legal? JT, wow. happy, happy th- 31, 32. How old are you? 32. 32. 32. Yeah. How how does it feel to be thirty? To, I hate that question, but I'm gonna ask it. How does it feel to be thirty two? Such a stupid question. No, I feel like I'm. I mean, like I'm blessed all the time. You know, um, like I said in the past, since my last birthday, I've clothed three hundred and six homeless people. Um, oh yes. I've been honestly, you know, what I'm saying I lost fifty, what fifty two pounds since my last birthday. So. Yeah, like I'm just, uh, I met Janet, you know what I'm saying? My, 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 yeah. Like, it's just, yeah, I, I'm grateful. Um, and y'all are kind of the same height, but go ahead. We really are. We really yeah. are. That is yeah. shady today. <laughs> He's a shady. He, he really and is. He's shading the fake person. Karma's going to come back to you, Ahmad. Abercrombie. No. no, you know, but like, you know, we got the our podcast is doing successful. Um, mm-hmm. Got my second one. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I. I fell in love again. I, just a lot of oh. great things have happened. I was gonna say I have on pink because you're in love. Go ahead. Uh, oh, on Wednesdays we were pink. Exactly. <gasps> oh, that was last week too. Last Wednesday we didn't wear pink when we recorded our podcast. What the I was fuck? Gonna say, it's oh, okay. Yeah, it's breast cancer awareness month also. It yeah. is. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm I'm happy that I was actually going to ask you um, if if. 31 was what you thought it would have brought would um be and Mm -hmm. um apparently i knew the answer but i didn't know if ahmad or the listeners knew the answer i'm not Um, gonna hold you though i've I've never been a person that look at numbers or mm -hmm. ages and be like you know i wonder what that was gonna be like because Mm -hmm. you know life is so taboo you know what i'm saying so like i just I, i take life Every year, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I try to expand my capacity as much as I can to be a good person, to try to put out what I want to receive. And mm-hmm. so far, it's been working for me. So, like, I'm, I'm grateful. I'm, you know, I, well, we I love, love you. I love I you. Know. you, you I know. You know how you. I feel about Jake. I, I, you already know how I feel about you. We I talk nearly say. every day. Yeah. And we, you know, I, I really do really love you. And our f- four or five year friendship i'm just That's like crazy. it's really been yeah. like a blessing you've been a blessing in my life and i don't know yeah. what where i would be if i didn't have a jeterius in my oh oh you know i'm a dog person i'm odd i know oh. i was gonna say dog, you just you just cut off in the dialogue honey we are we are we are showering <laughs> our friend 
Yes, you love okay. the period. You have four or five of your friends to it. <laughs> and then Lucky just came in and stole the spotlight, honey. Lord Jesus. I wanted, well, I wanted to I strip say, for Jeterius. You are the true, you are the true I wanted to yeah. strip for <laughs> Jeterius. I wanted to strip for Jeterius. And he said he, did, he said he wanted to have a good birthday. That was yeah. going to be my birthday gift. It's like, you know, show him a little something, something, you know? How about her? this? This mm-hmm. is my birthday gift. Because what a lot of people don't know is that my birthday is also Mental Health Awareness Day. Mm-hmm. So... Everybody <clears throat> do something that's good for their mental health. That's my birthday wish. All right. Don't, okay. take, don't take your clothes off, please. Well, apparently he said that that was going to be music. bad for his mental health market. Cue the music. <laughs> Wait, uh, cue the music. So I guess we're done. No, I guess we're not getting monetized on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I had underwear on. Oh, I got underwear on. <laughs> well, happy birthday, bro! I love you with all my Thank heart. You. I hope that your party tomorrow. It's sad that I'm not going to be there, but Ahmad's going to be mad. there. He's going to take my. Ahmad's going to steal the show. He's probably going to steal your birthday thunder. And That's your fine. Birthday. I want to because literally uh, everyone, everyone asks, "What's he going to be there?" I said, "Bro, I, I, sh- I sure. shall not. I'm going to be very docile. I'm going to be very classy, very cutesy, very demure." Oh, that's a lie. That's a lie. <laughs> you got to cut up because it literally right. just about everybody was asking about it. what's he going to be. That's yeah. going to be on the guest list. I'm not saying your names on here. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, no. I was going to say is everyone is all the males from last time going to be there. Yes. Actually. Oh, and they're going to be in your building. Oh, should I say that on the podcast? Yeah, they're going to be say, in your no, building. No, no, Thank you. They I can, put that on they, my social. <laughs> they can they can come upstairs with you though. They can come upstairs mm-hmm. after the party. Wow. <laughs> oh, we'll say from mile to mile. Let's I let's not. That supposed to be let's, my birthday I, suit. I was uh, gonna say let's not let's not let's not. Well, you're in a relationship. Up. You're not gonna go home with somebody. JT uh, Ma is single, and those four people mm-hmm. were clearly interested in Ma. They weren't clear. They weren't interested in me. So. Let them be interested in the in the fool. I'm joking. I was a mod- <laughs> I was I'm a modest whore. I am a whore, not a hoe. Okay, thank you. Well, either way it goes, they're gonna fuck you tonight, right. tomorrow night. Oh, so. well, God. Okay, I was gonna say that was Marcus's words, not mine. Everyone, we had a very wholesome party the last time for you know um, Friday, Friday the thirteenth. And so yeah. that is these are the gentlemen in which we're referring to. So as far as Marcus, I would call they were interested table. in a mod after that. They told JT that they some of I don't know off all four, but <clears throat> some of the four well, I definitely were think interested. one of them was straight. But go ahead. Was he? Okay. No, it was the, 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 the straight guy that was sitting next to the girl in the army, your army friend. Oh. Okay, not oh, my friend. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I didn't yeah. know them. Well, he says my friend. <laughs> This one paying no attention. Nope. Mia. <laughs> well, happy 32nd, and uh, we can't wait to hear about the party next Friday on the podcast. All For right? Sure. For sure. So we have an interesting, exciting show for you all. We're going to talk about Lisa Marie Presley <clears throat> keeping her dead son in, her dead son's body in her house for two wait. months. What? What? We're going to talk about it, okay? That's what we're going to talk about. Then we're going to talk about Sean Diddy Combs, his mother, is saying that he's innocent and they and she wants people to stop, you know, spreading malicious lies about him. Um, and then we're going to quickly talk about the Real Housewives of Potomac, their, that boring premiere that aired this week. So uh, let's get this party started, all right? All right, JT, I know you didn't watch Real House of, uh, Housewives of Potomac, but Ahmad did. And Ahmad, you already know, I felt like the premiere was a bore. It was just, I'm used to the premiere, Potomac premiere, being very, very exciting. Like something happening, nothing happened in this episode. And on top of that, Ahmad, I'm not the only person who thought it was, who thought it was boring. Only 500,000 people watched this premiere. That's really low for Potomac because, you know, Potomac is a new Atlanta. So they usually are getting high ratings, high no. ratings. What you don't think that that's the topic? I think that you know, people who are stuck in the past, you know, mm-hmm. you have to remember that you have to move forward, and anything to progress requires forward movement. So when it comes to you know numbers as far as like streaming and all of those things, like live viewers isn't really a thing anymore. Um, Cable's so, dead. Know, Cable's I was gonna dead. say. So when it comes to it, you know, we also have to remember there's a whole number of people who are watching outside of those numbers in which we're seeing. And so when it comes to the cast and the premiere and things of nature, I think that it it's just like any other story, because I really and honestly think like people who started watching reality television 
you know, when we did, you know, versus with people who watch reality television now, um, it's completely different. You know, so um, it's repetitive. It's, it's every the storylines <laughs> are repetitive, and we are seeing it on every reality show. Whether you're wa- talking about the Housewives, uh, Love and Hip Hop, t- uh, Toddlers and Tierras, it's all the same. They all have the same uh, storyline. Someone cheating on somebody. Um, uh, two women on the show are not getting along. They got into a physical fight. Someone's getting arrested for scamming old people. You know, it, it, we see it. It's all the same at this point, um, but- and I think that's the reason why people aren't interested. But I was going to say, I would not say people aren't interested because, like I said, those live numbers aren't really a re- reflective of people who are actually watching the show. Um, when it comes to, as far as, like you said, a boring premiere, um, you have to remember that this is a show that is moving forward in a different direction with some of the people who were dynamic to its previous seasons, you know, being removed. So we have to see a show without Candace. We have to see a show without Robin, which, unfortunately... We already know what the confessionals would have kind of given. I think it would have moved forward in a more negative direction because with, with Candace and Robin, correct. With Wendy uh, and Giselle getting along, I feel like negativity they? was going to come from Candace, or you know, being cordial um, or things of that nature. Um, Wendy and Robin were the ones that really had the issue, but I feel like you know, removing both Wendy and Giselle's kind of like counterpart. It forced everyone to kind of, you know, come into this new perspective. I think it's a little bit like, mm, especially when I'm um, seeing the preview of next week's episode, you know, between Giselle and Wendy sitting down for lunch. I think that's going to kind of be a little, it, it's just a little bit uncomfortable, if that makes sense, because you know deep down that they really kind of don't like each other. Um, so when it comes to it, I feel like there was a conversation before this show, this season happened. With, and from the producers, look, I agree. Yep, look, I agree. You, if this you want is, this, this is yep. going to go. And yep. I mean, if you can't, if you feel like you can't move forward, which I'm strongly a NECA fan, and I do feel that NECA should have been invited back, um, because that also would have been able to still give us a little bit of the past, like last season, to carry over to this season. I feel like they kind of just swiped everything, and it's just like, oh, it's brand new, it's here, it's fresh, it's exciting. And so it's just like, no, I, you know, we still want some drama. We still, but as mm-hmm. far as the first episode you know not having you know people fighting and feuding and all that stuff, that's kind of also what the fans wanted that show well, i don't know i don't even say fighting i don't expect fighting i just uh, it's humor it was uh, just it was just really boring really boring <laughs> go ahead Thank go you. ahead <laughs> you, you have, the uh but no i was gonna say not uh, when i say fighting i mean arguing you know as far as like them them just going at it like that's what that show has already been for the past three to four seasons. So it does need to be something that's a little bit more productive. You know, we have to build to the story. I feel like if you give too much in the beginning, there's nothing to then propel forward. You know, so I don't think it was boring. I think that it was providing us with what is going to, it laid the seeds for the plants to grow later on in the season. So we saw Stacy and Karen kind of take a dig at each other, but it's kind of the question of, didn't you bring her in? You know, we also then saw Wendy, you know, and really kind of no one, just Wendy, <laughs> um, you know, kind of wrapping up the end of a story that started two years ago. So we have to remember that reality television, people don't make monumental life decisions in the matter of six, five to six months. So, you know, it is going to be some things that are going to carry itself across, you know, a two to three seasons. So, you know, now with her ending her career as a professor, you know, that's something that, yes, it was two years ago, but also... It's kind of wrapping up a part and piece of her life. But no, I, I'm going to have to disagree. I don't think it was boring. I think it was providing us a build up for a good show. Boring. I know it was boring. They can come better. First of all, the, the entire episode was about Karen being getting arrested for a DUI. We all remember mm-hmm. that she got arrested earlier this year after she, mm-hmm. you know, was drinking and driving and ran into a tree. I don't think Karen's a drunk. And this episode was really making it seem like Karen has an alcohol problem. I don't think she has an alcohol problem. So what if Sharice always calls her? What do I call Sharice? All right. I have names for Sharice too. Does it make it true? No. I I said, there's smoke, there's fire. Okay. So this is, so this is why I'm saying that they're making it seem like Karen has alcohol problem. You know, she was telling Giselle that she's going through so much stress the night that she Mm -hmm. crashed her car. She's Mm -hmm. going through so much stress. I really expected Karen to say, you know what? The night I crashed my car, I was out to dinner with a good friend. I had too much to drink and I misjudged my sobriety. That answer would have been more validated than the whole, my parents died six years ago. Me and Ray are having marital problems. Like I just a bottle of wine in the car. We have to remember. 
So I just don't think that there is, that's the reason why um, she crashed her car um, was for the problems. But I didn't like the way the direction, the direction of the Pamir was making her seem like she has a drinking mm-hmm. problem. I mm-hmm. don't want that to be her storyline. I'm tired of these housewives having that as their storyline. We need a new storyline. Who isn't getting a DUI at this point? We're but all we have getting to remember, DUIs. too, it is a legality issue. So uh, she had to come across, you know, as not being a person that that was a common issue for her. Even if she does have a drinking problem, no one's going to go on national television like, girl, yes. Like, I'm just, I'm just be getting fucked up and I done got, you know, this is my second offense. You know, it kind of has to back away from that, that kind of reminder that this is her second DUI. Because I one, the, yeah, but one, the state of Maryland is a very no tolerance, you know, they have a no tolerance policy. So she really could get in trouble. <laughs> my seat is falling. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, did the bitch fall on the floor? <laughs> right. <laughs> All I thought was going down. I was like, hold on. <laughs> but, uh, I beat, it's, yeah, I see. All right, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, no, um, you know, Maryland is very strict with, you know, a no, you know, drinking and driving policy in addition to the amount of citations. Well, that's every girl, city, you, by the way. Girl, are you driving with no, you driving with no damn license? You got an open bottle? No. Oh, right, 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 right. I was going right. to say, you're driving without a valid a registered vehicle? Like, what, what? Honey, there was a lot going on. But no, I don't think she has an issue. But I do think, like you said, she kind of could have moved forward in a different type of transparency, you know? Yeah. And then I feel like that would have given her more of an upper hand on how to handle the ladies, you know, kind of going through the season because essentially to me, she's deflecting and she's not really addressing anything. It's, it is, you know, yes, my, you know, me and Ray are having issues. My parents, you know, I never really properly healed from that. And, you know, okay, which we get, you know, grief comes in different, you know, different ways and you can't really put a cap on, you know, grief and things like that, but it's very much so, honey, for the grand dame, I don't think she did a good pivot. Not at all. Don't yeah. like the direction, Karen. We need to change the storyline, even though it's already filmed. I need you to change the storyline somehow, some way. I'm not mm-hmm. interested in hearing this. But besides, but besides Karen, you know, like you, as you mentioned, there are some people who are not on the show anymore, mm-hmm. and it's, it's going into a new direction. But at the same time, you said that you think that producers talked to everyone and said, "We need you all to get along if you want to be on next season, season nine. So we, mm-hmm. we need you all to mend f- fences." When they, when Giselle threw that stupid hat party, by the way, JT, it was so stupid. She had this good. She had this fun idea to throw her Karen his 60th birthday party with hats you wear different taco hats and hot dog hats just out your well, corn just like your outfits okay. I don't care it's corn I don't care she could be 81 <laughs> the, the party was stupid with the hats look so even at that party you can tell Ahmad the, the tension amongst everyone they do not like each other they're only literally co-workers tension. I, I don't think you could tell they do not want to. They did not want to smile or be cordial. They, you could tell they were being forced to be next to each other. Um, but maybe, maybe, maybe they, they will soon develop a friendship, as you said. You you plant the seed in the ground and you watch it grow. Mm-hmm. So maybe that, that this mm-hmm. will develop into a friendship later this season. Not impressed by the, the by the premiere, but um, as everyone know, I'm kind of forced to watch the season since I am getting paid by you all to talk about it every week, every. We every day. Um, so what about the new world? What are, what are we getting from Stacy? What are we getting from you know a small introduction of Jazzy? What? Um, there it, I can't say that I got so far. We only got five minutes of camera time. Um, Stacy's going through divorce once again. Repetitive storyline that we've seen over and over again. I mean, that's and, life. You have to understand they can't fabricate their life. I'm not saying fabricate it, but it's nothing shocking at this right. point. You know, it's nothing mm-hmm. like oh. I mean, well, would, you, would, you, would you would you rather she's like married to a zebra? Like, what what would be entertaining to you in that? Yeah, I think yeah, maybe something. Yeah, I don't know bestiality. I don't know Portia <laughs> yeah, Williams and Dennis. I don't even know so, why I asked yeah. you that because Allegedly. I, I, I forget. Allegedly. I forget so, who I was talking to. <laughs> I don't even know why look, I asked that. Damn. You said my opinion, so that's my opinion. I don't have much. They were only on camera time for five Understood. minutes. Um, and there's too many new people. We have th- th- four, three new people? Well, we one returning. No. I was going to yeah. say, we have two new people. We have With Jackie the, and Stacey. And, and Mia's friend. We've met Jacqueline. Oh, and we've wait, met... wait, wait. Can we talk about Mia? Let me, I have to wrap this up real quick. Mia's <laughs> new boyfriend is, is it's shorter than her number one so they call them shorty right isn't that no shorty she called him apple box. she Karen called him apple box <laughs> apple box yes because he has to stand on a box to kiss her anyway and Mia definitely stands behind him because he is short and she's tall <laughs> i can't date anyone sh- i have dated short people i'm six foot three and sexy as could be but i can't i don't want to date anyone that short than me but look so they are living they move they mia is still married mm-hmm. to gordon and they mm-hmm. m- Mia moved out of the house of Gordon and moved in her own apartment in an apartment building. Gordon no. followed her. 
Well, yes. I was going to say, okay, correct. I'm sorry. I thought Gordon you were followed her and moved into the same building, and now they're all trying to be one big happy family. Weird when you're still married. Another. It's followed her, and he followed her still, and they're trying to be one big happy family. And <laughs> Gordon and the new boyfriend is doing. I mean, uh, Mia and the new boyfriend is doing Gordon's laundry. Weird. Mm. Just really yeah. weird that you have your wife's new boyfriend doing your laundry. Granted, I know he's sick, but you must be really sick to have your wife's new boyfriend really trying to do your laundry and shit like that. I like this as a storyline. Now, that's an interesting storyline because I want to see how this is going to play out. See, that's something new. We don't see that many people who are married who has a significant other and then who, whose husband is still in the picture. I would be interested in you, Mia. And maybe, JT, we can invite her on the podcast. She does do interviews all the time. And so I would like to talk to Tweedle, 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 uh, Tweedle D and Tweedle Dumb, you know, the oh, new boyfriend, God. too, because I think he's dumb. I, was say, well, I don't think that's going to progressively move you towards the security interview. But go ahead. <laughs> uh, you know, I talk shit about so many people who still follow me. So, But that's what I thought about Potomac Housewives. So, you know, follow me on my Instagram play page if you want to hear what I think about episode two. That is, if it doesn't put me to sleep. Yeah. Only 99 cents a month, all right? You people aren't broke. Pay it. Pay the money. All right? Give me oh. your money. Where, where <laughs> is my money? my money? Exactly. <laughs> Lisa Marie Presley. Now, this story is a little bit disturbing, um, but, but I, I feel bad for her as well at the same time. Mm -hmm. So Lisa has a new, Lisa has, you know, Lisa Marie Presley passed um, this year. Or last, this year. Um, she passed away. They actually don't know why, how she passed away. Um, mm -hmm. they're, they're speculating uh, aneurysm or a heart attack, but she has a mm -hmm. new memoir called From Here to the Great Unknown. And in <clears throat> the book, she revealed that she kept her son's body two months after he passed. And I think we all remember that her son, Benjamin, committed, committed suicide in 2020 at the age of 27 mm -hmm. years old. Um, so in the memoir, she said that when he you know, suddenly passed away. She wasn't sure where she was going to bury his body, if it was going to be in Hawaii or where they're from in Graceland, mm -hmm. Tennessee. So she kept, so she called the funeral home and she had the body shipped from the funeral home back to her house and she kept the, and she kept him in the room at 55 degrees for two months until she finally decided that she's going to have him buried um, in Graceland next to her father, Elvis Presley. Um, I, you know, it's just, people are saying that that's weird, but I understand. You know, it, it's he committed suicide. It's it's that you you still need closure and you don't have the ability to say goodbye. And this is her oldest son. You know, so there's more of a connection with this one. You two are looking at me so strange, but that's why I want to talk about it. What are, what are your thoughts? I'm gonna let you go it's on a, this, one, JT. It, it, I'm I get it. You know, mm -hmm. your love, uh, your son, your firstborn, all that. I get it. A dead body <laughs> in the house. <laughs> like, I mean. And JT likes scary shit. So and he, he's, so, he's perplexed. Honey, it's a, it's a shock factor. Exactly. Like, bro, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. No, I feel like, and honestly, people may disagree. I feel like personally, it should have been like a little psyche evaluation after that. Because like. Two Message. months with the dead body in your house. They don't like, imagine, so, imagine going you know, to a cocktail party at Lisa Marie's and girl, she tell you two months later, oh y'all know my dead son was up there. Like what? Right. No, girl. Or, uh -uh. or imagine imagine you at the party and you try to get instructions and go you know to get to the bathroom and you make the wrong turn. And, and you go and you're looking at a coffin. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> no he wasn't in the coffin, by the way. He was not in the, the coffin. Body just out. See, that's how I was envisioning it. <laughs> Oh no, bitch! <laughs> oh no, bitch! No, ma'am. I would have been okay. I would have been better off with a damn coffin. I'm gonna say you just got you just got this log up in here. As, uh, it, it, no, that's that's wrong Strangely, on so many levels. Even though I don't know who we're talking about, about every day, make it happen. Even wait, wait, wait. No, you don't know who we're talking about. No, I'm saying like even like I'm saying like I I don't know much about her and nothing like that, oh, but mm. like. Even I, I, in, the, in, in the back of my mind, I, I already knew that he meant like the body itself was just there for two months. Two oh, months. No, I, 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 like, I was, was she popping her head in the room saying what it was doing or? In the book, she just said that, you know, she just needed that closure. She wasn't ready to let go. I mean, he did commit suicide out of the blue. Mm -hmm. And this is her oldest son. And mm -hmm. God forbid anything to happen to any of our parents. But I think that, you know, if, if any of our parents passed away out of the blue, if we had the ability Maybe we would do the same thing. Cynthia is one in the ground. Cynthia is one in the ground. Very nice, baby. I was about to say, I, I'm the only mm -hmm. everything, the only nephew, the only grandchild, and the only child. Damn. All three of them would be in the grave 
within a week's time. <laughs> and they will be at, stored at the, the, the funeral home. Okay, the, I was going to say, because I don't home. need to go in and check on my mama, because if she started talking back, bitch, I know something wrong with me. Right. So would you, would like, you be uncomfortable even, the, like, you know, putting your the clothes on your anyone who's passive, putting the clothes on them, doing their makeup, doing their hair, would that make you uncomfortable as well? What's so crazy is it's not the it's not sound crazy. It's not the fact that you know my relative would be dead that would be uncomfortable. It's because I just want to see them naked. That's why. I, that's what makes it uncomfortable. Oh, I, I don't have a problem with that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No. Let me tell you something. That. How, how I I have a role as an assistant property manager here at at my building. The funeral home has a role as well with their duties and, and jobs. So you're going to put those clothes on. You're going to embalm them. And I'm mortician. Sure, I'm going to make sure. But sometimes a family wants to do that looks, themselves. They don't want someone doing their makeup. I'm going to make they sure my mother do. looks exactly yeah, Somebody has to do it. Yeah. Thank you. I was going to say. I would, I, I, you know, I thing. was a medical assistant at a hospital for six years, and I would have to wrap dead bodies up. I have to tie their hands up. If I wanted to jaw. be a mortician, I would have went. I would have. I would have to that. break the jaw because we some the, the you know the body gets tensed up, so the jaw. So we have to break the jaw to shut it. I didn't like that. We'll have to. As if they're sucking dick. Oh, show them okay. the body, JT. Oh. <laughs> See, it's I so funny like how me and my head are on to that still, but yeah, your head keep going back and forth, and bobble head. <laughs> so, that's all exactly. right. That's well, when, we, 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 when you guys come to my funeral, I'm like, ah! yeah, expect me to the coffin. I'm gonna say. <laughs> so make sure we deliver you to your mama, and I'm just like that. Mouth <laughs> open. Right. Yep. I got it from you, mama. You see what y'all done did to this child? Right. Look at him. Just look just like crazy. This. Look, looking just like this. Look, I was going to say, <laughs> be, up here with the, be up here with the nini, uh-uh, because you sound slow. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you sound like but, you slow. But with this information being revealed about Lisa's son, I wonder if they did the same thing with Lisa when she passed away. I shouldn't be joking. No, I was going to say, Lisa <laughs> sound like she was the one that had the closure file. I don't think the family's going to have no issues with putting it in the flow. I was going to just put it in there. <laughs> put it on in there, honey, and just, just slide her on down there. And also in this memoir, she also mentioned that when she married Michael Jackson back in the 90s, that he mm-hmm. was a virgin. And we yes. were talking about it before we Michael started recording. <laughs> that I think that uh, Michael was still a virgin after the divorce, too. And then, JT, like you were saying that he was a virgin. Oh, his kids. God. You know, but his what about the woman who, who birthed the kids? That's Marcus, what she said. That Marcus, they, you think it's all a lie? Go. Marcus, please let it go. And we know how I go, how I ride for Janet and Michael. I'm. Wait, I wanted your opinion. That's why I'm bringing right. it up. <laughs> Bring, you know talk ride, about it. You know I ride for them heavy, but and it, it on my side ain't no Janet and Michael slander. But I'm sorry, I don't see Michael ever have had sex, and I don't. It, let's Bye. be clear. I'm sorry. Unless what about the little boys? It's a little. It's two boys and a girl. Blanket Prince and no, Paris. No, you said you don't think he has sex. What about all those allegations with him and with the little boys? You think that's true? Oh no, I don't believe that. No, we're not I talking don't. about that. What well, we're saying, version. We're not talking about that. <laughs> but no, I don't. I don't think. The, now, was it weird and stuff? Because even Janet herself has said that her brother put himself in in very tough situations and stuff. And Latoya, she went. She she said he was guilty. Remember, so she, we're not talking about Casper. We're talking about the two relevant. Run away and hide. Right, the relevant Jacksons. Uh, but yeah, there's no, only I, a few of them. There's only two of them. There's only two of them. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, no, like I'm sorry, those are not his kids. Paris, Black okay. Prince, they are his spiritual children. I'm pretty sure he loved them. Like like they came from him. Mm-hmm. Do you think he, he adopted them? He, well, he had out, to legally out, adopt out, them. Outside of adoption and like, well, a financial. Mm-hmm. Is, Artificial have, insemination, right? He he didn't he didn't mm-hmm. sexually have those kids, in my opinion. I, I, I okay. Could you know. imagine having sex with Michael? Hey, hey. <laughs> I like your boobies. <laughs> but here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. The whole light voice thing was all like, imp- yeah, he know, had a deep voice. Ass, yeah. He had a very yeah. deep yeah. voice, and I yeah. still don't see him. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I, I yes. had to go to bed, honey. Yeah. So, are, no, Paris Hilton. The Paris Hilton has did this, does the same thing. She has a different voice when she talks in pu- on on TV, but in in real life she has a deeper voice. I wonder what and you know they were close, so maybe Michael told Paris as a young child, you know, this is what you do when you talk, you know, when you do interviews, you sound like this, you know. I don't get that why he did always keep that voice and why she continues to keep that voice. Well, as I would well. love to know what he he he. Oh, there's uh, videos. Sound like there's videos yeah, of his real voice. Yeah, like, my favorite the, is when he, my really favorite deep. is when Janet. 
uh, presented him with the Lifetime Achievement Award, and he went, he was like, um, 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 <laughs> can you hear me? <laughs> no, bro, come on, be for real. Come on now. No, don't say bro, go say sis. <laughs> no. Hey, you are so disrespectful. He is. If you don't have disrespect for he, oh, had, he, he had he, I mean he his hair was laid like a sis. All right. So honey, honestly, if, you go, if you go look at any of his um <laughs> bad most of his bad tour era, he performed a lot in his deep voice though. Yes, yeah, and I that's not a that, different yes, version yeah. of deep because I, I don't ever see him sounding like you, JT. But go ahead. No, I mean it's deep. It wasn't yeah. that deep like um, JT's voice, but it was deeper than mine. You know, I have a high mm. voice, so you know. Okay, bye. Go ahead. <laughs> Wait, speaking about sissy, sissy Houston, she died um, this week. You know, um, uh, Whitney Houston. She Houston's, lived a good life. I'm she sorry, she had Alzheimer's, life. Alzheimer's disease, and she was on hospice. I didn't even know she had Alzheimer's. Or you know? Alzheimer's. I can't say it. I don't know. Yeah. You know, all all the timers. I was gonna let him have it, but mm-hmm. I'm I make up my own fucking words. You know what? I'm Webster if you didn't know, bitch. All right, I'm making my own mm-hmm. fucking words. No, all you right? need Webster. I was say, it's a, it's a, <laughs> <laughs> it gives very much. You need Webster. <laughs> <laughs> Oof, Lord. We're not supposed mm. to be laughing when we're talking about the dead. All right, we laughed about Lisa Marie, and now we're laughing about you Cicely Tyson. Man, man, sis. What I mean, is? I'm about Cicely Tyson. Um. Well, that's why I remember because I called him sis, and then her name is Sissy. So that's why I was like speaking about Sissy. So, you know, question. let me ask you mm-hmm. something. This may be controversial. Who said it? I understand what she, you know, what she passed from and everything, and God bless her soul. But excuse me, um, do y'all sometimes feel like? I mean, she lived to what ninety one, correct? Mm-hmm. We're talking about Sissy. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, I, granted, it's always sad when someone passed, but. Should we really be like mourning when a person that lived a long <laughs> life like that? Bro? Like just like uh, my boy uh, James Earl Jones and it. Like, bro, you you live to almost a hundred. Like, well, the thing is, though, we don't want anyone to die, no matter how old they are. And yeah, we are happy that they know, live to a hundred. You know, but yeah, but we still are mourning. I mean, think like I said, it's just think about your loved ones of, of life. Yeah. No, 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 that's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, I'm I'm not disregarding any of that, but I guess like for me, I always saw death as a thank you all. You know, like. A, 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 if it if, if it wasn't done at the hands of someone else, mm-hmm. you know, um, like I'd rather a person go ahead and pass and be like super ill, like with cancer and all that, and mm-hmm. it's like taking over and be just being tortured. Like I'd rather you, you know, what I'm saying, not be here and be somewhere where you'll be at peace, you know. So, but well, according to Michael B. Douglas, or <clears throat> Al, man, who got well, someone has said that there is no afterlife recently did you see that on the tmz he mm-hmm. said that he had accidentally, he, he, he said i think it was al pacino and he said that he actually he died and they brought him back to life but he said there was nothing there it was mm-hmm. just gone he played the craft he, he on the craft <laughs> well that's another i mean just real quick do you believe in an afterlife i do I, i'm i'm on the fence i i i sometimes believe and then sometimes well, so I don't going somewhere is it uh. Is it? Because you have to think about this. Animals and sex, they all have souls. And they're not going to heaven. They're, when they pass away, they just disappear. So what makes us different than animals? Who said that? God. I don't know. I, I mean, they say all I, dogs go to heaven. Yeah, yeah, that was a Disney movie. We're talking about real, real life. No, but honestly, though, I, just like with Noah's Ark and stuff, I, I can hit that Bible real quick. You know, like... No one from Noah's Ark like went to heaven. No one, not even the no, people. No, no, no. Oh. I'm talking about the animals. Like, they didn't go to heaven. Where's the proof in that, though? Heaven didn't come about until after Jesus died. That's what mm. when heaven came about. So everyone be, pre-Jesus didn't go to heaven. That was the look it up. You know, I was in that cult for six years, so maybe that's their rules. C U L T. But maybe that was their situation. But I'm I, I I'm pretty sure that for all religions, people didn't go to heaven immediately. It was after Christ gave His blood for him, you know, for us that we went to heaven after He passed away. Mm-hmm. That's the way I remember it. Perceived it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Not sure. Moving on. But, go ahead. Uh, Right, Kanye West. Oh, can we go back? Oh, 
All right, so rumors surfer this week of Kanye West and his wife, Bianca Cersei. Um, they're headed for divorce after two years. This is crazy that they've been together for two years. I'm just like, right. why, why does she stay with this nut for two years? Okay, but look at her, though. She's not like she wasn't all right in the head either. So yeah, I mean, she, she like, looks she like... She looks like the character from um, The Nightmare Before uh, um, Christmas, like something from a Tim Burton movie. Like she's very, mm-hmm. very big eyes, really shrinky hair, really weird. But of course, that's all of his doing. That's all yep. his creation. He yep. wants his women to look like, you know, that. And Character. I think that's why. Claymation. Away. Anyways, this rumor came from a close source of theirs, and they said that the two had been separate for the past couple of months when she allegedly uh, moved to Australia, where she's from, and she moved back um, home, and then he's been in Japan alone. Um, but since these rumors surfaced of them divorcing, they were spotted recently in Japan, all cuddled up and kissy kissy. You know, it's obviously a PR move. I think that they are headed for divorce, and they're trying to just, you know, just try to make the story not true um Mm -hmm. i'm I'm just surprised that they've been together for two years i just think that that's just insane to me how two years went by so quickly and it's just insane that she actually put up with his weird uh his weird behavior kanye has been everywhere but to therapy yes i I think therapy there's nothing that can actually help um kanye and i I think that he actually does he's participating in demonic activity that's very much so ever since his mom died it's almost like the real him died too because like mm-hmm. the stuff that it, i feel like he it's just it, it, to me is i i understand people want to be so different you want your aesthetic you want your music or whatever that you're promoting out there for entertainment you want it to stand out to be different but i feel like everything he does it's just very it's, it's, it's strategically demonic mm-hmm. yeah very yeah. It, like very call and just demon yeah. Like yeah, it yeah. just has it just has a, a, a demonic presence to it. Very much so. A very mm. a very negative connotation. I will say his last two albums, uh, called The Vault, they've been actually kind of good. Actually, that's the, that's the theme song for our show. A <laughs> demon. From his album. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. A demon. Oh. oh. Okay. Wow. He makes some good music, you know. But they do say that people part of the Illuminati. Remember the. Remember that little thing? They do say that they make good music, and that's why they make good music, because they're part of demons. Um, and so I often wonder that, too. I think that it was a, either a TV show or a movie that was uh, based mm. off of people who make demon music, and behind the music, they're actually reciting some lyrics, so th- some spell to make people love the music. And I yeah, wonder, I've heard that. And I wonder when someone dropped an album in 2022 and they, you know, a disco album that we all loved, if there was some spells being said behind it, because I am still addicted to Renaissance. And I, I wonder how true that is, you know, if there are artists who, because in the, in the 80s, there was a rock and roll band. If you played their music backwards, it said, I love Satan, worship Satan, da, 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 da. So I wonder if that is still happening to this day. Do you not know about the 80s group who did that? I mean, they said if you, if you uh, play single ladies back. Is demonic. I believe it. I believe it. Yeah, that's because why are we addicted to? Why are we addicted to albums? Like why? Why do? Unless they're really, really. I mean, I could say that they're not that good, but I just wonder if if it's if I really love this album because it's really good music, or if I'm I'm under the spell. You know, I can say any album I'm crazy about uh, is only because they they have spoken to where I was in my life at the time. It's not because. Of no demonic stuff. I, I don't play that. Yeah, I wonder if we are getting hocus pocus. I say it's a pie. <laughs> what are the lyrics? Hey, I say it's a pie. Up and baby, up and die. In commentary, I'm I in commentary, I'm I. You know, say hi, hi, say bye, bye. bye. <laughs> Every Halloween, I always ex- randomly just shout book. <laughs> mm. I can't. I I say, at this point, I'm in the Twilight Zone. Okay. You know what? <laughs> if we all literally, that's why Mark needs to move here. Because if we, mm. to, we could have did a, a male version of the witches from Hocus We could have been the, the warlocks of Hocus Pocus. I definitely would have been one You know what we should have did too? Um, the Lose My Breath Challenge. I'm not doing that bullshit. That would have been fun. Why not? Mm. It would have been fun to I do. Just, because What's the Lose My Breath our, Challenge? You walking in poles and yeah, it's a TikTok I'm challenge. I'm sorry, I already around. seen the TikTok that took that one that already, so nothing would have. And it. that's why when you had showed it to me, I thought about it later. I was like, oh, we could have did that. We could have did like yeah, you know, Michael, fun. Ghostface, and Freddy Krueger. Freddy Krueger ate them up. I'm sorry. Oh, okay, I saw that. Oh yeah, Fred, Freddy was throwing ass. Freddy, Freddy was back. Ate the poles and everything. 
Uh, Freddie was, uh, Freddie was back there. Baby, Freddie was back there Krugering. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's 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 talk about a real cougar. Um, yeah. Janice, <laughs> what? <laughs> was that a bark? What, what the fuck is happening? It is barking. You just knocked my breath out of me. <laughs> Janice <laughs> Combs, Sean Diddy's mother, Sean Diddy Combs' mother. She finally spoke out about all the allegations about um, what all the allegations her son is facing. Um, through her lawyer, Janice said that Diddy is being judged not by the truth, but by a narrative. I'm sorry. <laughs> Because <laughs> she she said that he's being judged not by the truth but by a narrative created by lies. Ma'am, go to sleep. Yeah, go, literally, go to sleep. please go to bed. Like, go, At go, the go nearest knit office, a, right? Go, 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 go knit she, a sweater or something. Something. All right, knit a sweater. Saying I'm sorry that my son put you through all this trauma. So knit a sweater all to all his victims. She also said that it's painful watching her son being lynched by the public when he doesn't have the opportunity to defend his his innocence and then she spoke out about the video of him assaulting cassie she said that some this is her quotes sometimes the truth and lies become so closely intertwined that it becomes terrifying to admit one part of the story when the truth is outside the norm or is too complicated to believe end quote bitch go to sleep oh, I shouldn't cry. I hate on women bitches go it was to sleep. domestic abuse like right. what yeah. are you talking I mean, about there was no, it's there it's there yeah, and like, I mean, about... and, and guess who wasn't there? You. So you, you. need to be quiet. Yeah, so what are we saying? I was going to say, yeah, say? Gonna say no, nah, ma'am. Because to me, my thing is the, the amount of people. Now, yes, I did see where, you know, one of the accusers or whatever, um, her ex-boyfriend came out where he, uh, she, you know, was like, she would give him $3 million if he lied along with her. But you can't, you can't collude that with the amount of people who are, who have factual information and are telling the truth like it, there's it, a video no. the video is a truth and so the, the fact that yeah. we saw what I'm just saying, I, want, I, want, I want to see the tape trying to who's at the freak house let uh, me honestly, see them honestly oh, I'm, 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 bet you, I'm willing to bet you I give it maybe by that they're not going to let this year go out before those tapes come out I'm telling oh, I, you but, I, but it depends it's, I feel like it's too many powerful people who are in those tapes that they will not come out. No, and that's what know? I'm about to bring up, though. That's what I'm about to bring up. No, according, to page, according to page six, many celebs that were involved in the sex parties that were on the tapes, they have reached a private settlement with yes. all the victims. So it will not get released. We are not going to ever get the names of these people because these celebrities are paying with the victims or whatever they want because they know if their name gets leaked out to the public, their career, career is done. All right, and yeah. the and the things that from those raids, it's already been disclosed that we will not find any of the we will not find out any of the things that were discovered in those raids, as well as anything that they discovered via his social media accounts. Like all of that information has been sealed by the law, so we're never going to really truly find out like those salacious details, you know, behind these things. Like we think that we want to. Now we may get a little, you know, crumb of something. But as far as if you're thinking you're going to see Kim Kardashian getting bust down, allegedly, or, you know, all of these other people, no, it's not going to happen. It's too much money involved. Do you know who is the alleged celebrity who is, I guess, the main star of most of the tapes? Bieber. Yes. Bieber. And what I read, and this is all alleged, I'm not sure, that he was actually um, gang raped <clears throat> by Diddy and all of Diddy's friends and other celebrities alleged. that's why that's why to me i saw it earlier on like i wasn't a, i wasn't a, a justin bieber fan when he first came out i would say going me into either. his second album going to like his song boyfriend on forward oh yeah i was that's when i kind of became a justin bieber fan i still am now like he put on a good concert i love his music uh but how people were saying like oh he's going crazy or you know he he don't care about music anymore i'm just like bro this boy is hurt and he holding on to something that he is literally not talking about. Like, was a mm -hmm. crazy narrative attached to him? I don't remember that. Very oh. much so. Yes, like oh. because like it, it was times where even some of his more recent stuff, like he'll crash out like easy. He'll um go on stage and literally like forget the lyrics to his songs, all this kind of stuff. And people thought like maybe drugs or he just don't care. He being rude or whatever. But mm -hmm. I'm like that boy is that boy is angry. That boy is angry. And he's hurt and like now we're starting to see that's why like to me that's why i think 
Usher took him took him under his wing so uh, early on too because like I told you how I feel about P Diddy. You know I'm gonna always stand by that. Like I just always saw him as a demonic presence. Like ever since my mom told me when I was younger that he had some involvement with killing Tupac because Tupac was the first celebrity I ever heard that got killed. So mm-hmm. I, I just always saw P Diddy as that. I've never seen him as all this stuff that everyone says he is. Like I just don't. That, no. Like I said, it's, when he for uh, making the band, it was it for me, bitch. You know, make people walk to fucking say, Brooklyn yeah. to get a damn cheesecake. Oh no, bitch! They would have sent me home because guess what? I would have read everybody down before I left. You want me to walk to where to do what? Oh, okay. Mm-mm. Also, many outlets are reporting that Diddy has agreed to pay six million dollars to a male sex worker who claimed he was used as a sex slave and he was hmm. forced to have sex with Diddy and Cassie. And in addition to the six million dollars, um, the this the male sex worker is to sign a non disclosure agreement that he can't, you know, talk about what mm-hmm. he experienced or went through with Diddy um <clears throat> during the times that he was used as a sex slave. Um so that that's that's not um, so that's not that's so alleged. We don't know if that's actually true or not. But did he? Mm-hmm. His trial begins this week. Um, I think it actually begins tomorrow, October tenth. Really? Yeah, it begins. And then he all because he just recently ap- filed an appeal to be released because they were holding him up until his trial began. Mm-hmm. So he I filed to appeal because it begins this week. Um, so I'm, sorry. I'm obsessed I, about it. I'm obsessed. I, I, well. like the- I am as well. I'm sorry. I, I don't know. I, I, mean, I understand that you know we may obviously we may not ever see the tapes from the parties and stuff, mm-hmm. but I tell you what though, I feel like this has opened a door to taking down some of the most powerful people in Hollywood. You may not get discovered about the Diddy party, but whatever you've been doing, I you better oh go, baby you better, yes, you better have a laundry list of all your victims. I'm talking about coming everybody. for Beyonce. Man, no, listen. Did you see you? what Piers Morgan? I, I, or I didn't write anything down. Uh-huh. So I remember. Did you see what Piers Morgan? He had apologized to Jay Z and Beyonce. Did you see that yeah. video? I mean, but someone broke it down and it, it, it looked like legally it made sense. You know, if you're suing poor people, you know, for whatever it is that they say about you, like Jaguar White probably ain't got a mind. You know, so when it comes to this, no, it's really no, no, no sense to sue. You know, someone because it's going to end up costing you money. But once you go on a platform like that, Pierce Morgan has, and you like are that? irresponsible, you know, with your words, no, you're going to have to retract. She should have said allegedly, and then she didn't say allegedly. Um, so that's the reason why the interview had to be taken down, and Pierce had to po- send an apology <laughs> to Jay Z and Beyonce because Jay Z and Beyonce sent Pierce a cease and desist, the cease and desist, cease and desist letter. Um, mm-hmm. And so, but you know what? <clears throat> I don't care if she didn't use allegedly. I saw snippets of the interview and I believe everything she said. This woman was in the business with Jay Z. She was signed to um, uh, the Bad Boy Records. I understand. I I believe everything this Jaguar woman said. Supersonic pussy gadgets like a jogger, so keep back, so let me go. I just love that song, by the way. But she didn't sing that. That's um, my girl Victoria Monet. Um, you know, yeah, I was like, what? I, the Jaguar. <laughs> you didn't think you don't know the song Jaguar by Victoria is- Monet? I thought it was Jaguar, but yeah. Jaguar? With the singer of the the Jaguar. Jaguar. Whatever. I believe her. So you're like I said like I said earlier, he needs Webster. I just said earlier. What? I missed the entire read. Say it again. (laughs) I I need Webster. I I am Webster. I know I make a make my own words. Very much though, bitch. You're the look. You're the King James version. (laughs) I'm the old testament bitch. All right. (laughs) Reality star Safari recently went on recently went to one of his ex girlfriend's concert and I think we all know who I'm talking about, but he dates so mm-hmm. many girls, I guess I have to tell you who Nicki Minaj was at Nicki Minaj's concert. Well, he ain't date nobody. I mean who else could be his ex that's actually doing well, a concert? The the girl from Love and Hip Hop, the the uh Look at Spanish what you just queen. Said. Look at what you just said. <laughs> <laughs> you girl girl from Love Love and Hip Hop. No. Yeah. Oh, her too. No, no, no. From Miami. The the uh, Oh, um, you're talking about, um, uh, I mean, uh, uh, I know who you're talking about. Something. The girl who had the twins. Yeah, her. Um, but look. Amara. So th- those who've been around, like, you know, around all of our age, we know that Safari was Nikki's ex-boyfriend when she first came into the music industry. You know, they were dating. They were high school sweethearts. And then they dated up until 2000, 2012 because mm-hmm. he helped. He wrote and produced her first two albums. And then they broke up after 2012. Anyways, he attended her concert this week when she was in Miami for her pink, pink 
Friday 2 concert, you know, mm-hmm. I attended and I did not have a good time. You know, I told you she didn't come on stage till 11.30 p.m. The concert will start at 9 p.m., all right? She wasn't singing the lyrics. She was just on stage looking so- sloppy with her deflated ass. And then she wasn't even dancing. She was just standing there having all of us just, you know, work the lyrics for her. about. I told you, you so, she was going to do this when I, went, when I went to Essence. I like, thought that maybe from the time that she, you saw her, and then by the time I would see her, it, she would have improved and, and would have been more considerate of her that's fans. A two, that's a two-year gap, because I saw her in, mm-hmm. in Essence July of 2022. And it's a two-year yeah. gap in between her, both her ass cheeks, all right? They look terrible in person. Terrible. Boom, boom, like a fucking gap tooth, all right? So, and then, you know, it's just inconsiderate. I had work the next day, JT. I had this podcast to do the next day. Just inconsiderate. I, I left at 1 o'clock in the morning, and she still was performing. But Safari seemed to be enjoying himself on Monday. He recorded the entire thing. He vlogged about it. Um, and I have some of the footage of um, the vlog of him saying how he enjoyed the show. So um, here's a video clip, and take a listen. I'm happy. I'm happy for Nikki. I'm, I'm proud. I, like, I don't, like... We don't have to be friends. We don't got to be cool. But I just know how I feel about everything that is going on with her, her life, where she's at. And, you know, I just really feel like just happy and proud, you know. And I know some people are like, oh, I don't, they don't care if you're happy and proud. Ooh, great. That's you. This is me. I didn't sneak in. I paid my money. I supported. I bought a ticket for each one of my security guards. Everyone who's with me, I definitely spent a couple, a couple, couple, couple of them oops on the tickets and, you know, supported. I even went to the merch store. I just didn't like, they didn't have bags for like the merch. I bought some merch and hoodies, but all jokes aside, it was like, wow, good memories. Good memories outweigh the bag. I'm just proud. Like, I can't front. I can't. I don't see anything wrong with what Safari did. A lot of people are saying that he's stalking Nikki. It's weird that mm-hmm. he went to see his ex girlfriend. Nobody but her fans saying all that. I was going to say stuff. that's that's, exactly. that's so stupid. I was going to say because it's if you ignorant. broke up with if you broke up with someone you know almost a decade ago, like. Move, right. move on. It's a funny type to be toxic, anyways. You know, we see how he is with his ex girlfriends. He honestly just tries to get along with everybody. He is very. He just don't take good care of his <laughs> kids. <laughs> you think he's hot? I'm yeah. not gonna you. I look yeah, right gonna at you. Say, no, I'm not gonna say that, bitch. But he <laughs> doesn't seem say the it. type to be pressed over. He seems very yes. narcissistic. He's about him, like right. in himself and his image, and you know what he has going on. So no. I was gonna say I don't. I think when he went to that concert, they were just like, "Oh, Nikki's in Miami." You know, shit. You know, let's go. You know, and so I mean, it would be the same thing. Now, I mean, if yeah, now I'm not gonna say you know, I'd just be itching to go. You but know, he, but he wrote the songs, so he wants yeah. to see the songs. That's, and he's, that, 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 that's what I was about to say. I was about to say, okay, okay I mean, yeah. I, I think it's more so of her. I mean, I want to go see my work live. And my work, yes. yeah. I was gonna say a hundred percent. But in the video, he said he's still a fan of Nikki, and always will be a fan. And Nikki makes some good bangers. Nikki makes some good bangers, and I think that you know, I I love the fact that he was going to come on talking in that weird voice. So fans are saying that she was actually throwing some shade towards him when she was on stage because she was saying like you know before some of her songs, she's like, "Have you ever been stalked by an ex?" Oh, and she said, have you ever got your heart broken or have you ever got cheated on? You know, I, she wasn't throwing shade. She said the same shit when I saw her back in April. It's a script that she's mm-hmm. reading from. The only shady thing I will say is that she did invite her husband, Kenny Petty. You know, he's a child molester. She did invite him on stage and she was like, you know, grinding gr- grinding on him on stage. I don't know and if neither she... person looked like they was present for it either. I was going to say, the, the souls and the spirits of those bodies were backstage. <laughs> I was about to say, the, uh, Brian, I was about the to way say, she, the way she, they were there but they, so they, was yeah. there. <laughs> oh, the, way she, the way she threw that chicken thigh up on that man on that stage yeah. and he walked off afterwards like he was just so uninterested like he yeah. he so do yeah. you think that she brought him out because safari was there or do you think that was already playing because i don't even know if she even knows at the t- if she even knew at the yeah, time if that, that he was there yeah, yeah i was gonna say i i i mean i don't foresee you know safari going I just personally don't like putting his real name to purchase these tickets and you know all of those things so I really don't think that she knew that he was there and if she did then she got some good ass people on her team 
But, but he was going live too on his Instagram, so I don't know. I don't know if maybe she caught wind of it before. She maybe and then, I was gonna say. Doing her, mean, I, I'm not gonna sit here and hold you though. Irregardless of oh, Safari may not be this big top notch artist or whatever, but I mean Safari, pedophile petty. I mean that's not really. Yes, a if anything, you should have left him in the back in the bike. In the bike. Don't worry I, about it, it. it. Yeah, I mean, like, it's urban for back. Like, yeah, yeah, I don't. Yeah. I may not know my words, but I don't speak Ebonics. Look, and I, I and JT, this is the reason why I think I can say this. I love you, Ebonics. But you don't love me? I never heard you say that on this podcast that you love me, but you love someone that you just met? Really? Really? Because he be picking up what I'm putting down in the urban space. Oh, congratulations. All right. whoop de doo okay. Look, I, 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 I was hard. saying... Look, I was saying, yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I can't even think of a comeback. Right. <laughs> you know what? Fuck it. This is, all right, let, can I get my point across? Look, I was saying that it's not <laughs> weird that Safari is <laughs> supporting. Uh, fuck it. All right. Raven, go ahead, JT. Talk about Raven. Uh, come on, finish your point. I don't know that. I go ahead, go Raven. No, well, no we're point. gonna stay silent. We're gonna stay silent in this, and we're gonna do it in. in then we can do, do an eye in. contest. Let's all look each other in each other's eyes. We're gonna do <laughs> silent, silent library. You're a fucking asshole. <laughs> 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 I was gonna say it's not weird that he's supporting his ex because you know yeah. I was real close with my ex for some years, and JT, you were as well. And there's nothing wrong mm -hmm. with uh, exes supporting each other. That's it. Raven, Raven, JT, take it away for Raven. <laughs> <so ready. laughs> All right, guys. So this author, her name is Ashley Spencer. She wrote an unauthorized um, tell-all book called Disney High, and basically mm -hmm. she went and talked to a lot of people who used to work for the Disney Channel and stuff like that, who worked with people like Miley Cyrus, Raven Simone, uh, Demi Lovato, Selena Gomez, you know, and the list goes on. Like, during mm -hmm. our era, growing up watching Disney, and come to find out, um, this, that's the was my favorite, is it my, is my, is my second favorite TV show of all time, and my favorite show from Disney, but like, I didn't even know this. Um, apparently, during season two, of that's so raven it was the uh, 11th episode in season two called that's so not raven where um you know she wanted to be a model like she oh, was a model yeah, I remember that mm -hmm. yeah so yeah it mm -hmm. was that episode so apparently in real life you know how in the episode how they all how they alter her body for the article to make her look super skinny so she did like she tried to like exercise and be a size two by the end of the week and all of that so apparently during that season uh you know she was 18 at the time when she filmed season two uh, so, you know, your body's fluctuating and everything like that. So they went back and like digitally um, like edited like a lot of episodes of season two to make Raven seem slimmer than what she really was. And now all this is coming out. And, you know, it's kind of sad because like Nat Raven has spoken out about different things they did to her during because I know season four. Remember, I don't know if y'all watched during season four when uh, Corey redesigned her room. That's how she mm -hmm. got the iconic room and stuff. So if mm -hmm. you look at the episode, it's called Hook Up My Space. If you go to the uh, to the episode on Disney Plus, you'll be able to see Raven looks a lot darker. Like she looks really dark. But that was during the time where Raven Raven spoke out. She said that the execs at Disney felt like she was not dark enough to be a black girl. So they made her go like tan like three times a week to make and put like makeup and stuff on her to make her seem like she's darker. And stuff like that so she can appear as a black girl and stuff like that you know so this book is like telling everything it's called disney high the untold story of the of the rise and fall of disney channel's tween empire so it's like mm. it's a good read i already ordered on amazon it's like 300 some pages i'm definitely gonna read it that's but a quick read yeah it's yeah. a lot of it's, it's a lot of information but i feel like that's kind of sad because looking back people want us to see raven as fat so bad <laughs> like <laughs> nobody and, wants to see that you said that before no no i'm saying like they did like the like different like blogs and all these kinds of, like TMZ, all these places back then they used to always try to say Raven's pregnant, Raven's this. Like she wasn't fat. Looking, look. I mean, you know, I was crazy about her, so I didn't see her as fat back then. But like looking at her now, and she stuff, gained like, weight. She did gain weight, but she wasn't. I wouldn't say that she was fat. She, no, you know, I was gonna say I, I would, I would, I never 
Honestly, the body, was, the body was banging, though, because she was just a curvaceous From season girl. one to season four. Well, she, she she was younger, so when you get yeah, older, you start getting Exactly, yeah. So that's, like, what was, yeah. that's what it was, though. That's what it was. And that's a lot of, I don't, do you remember that all that, um, that all that documentary, one of the girls got fired because the older she got, the more she gained weight. And yeah. they fired her. Same thing has happened in Raven. She was slimmer season one because she was mm-hmm. younger, but as you got older, she got, you know, I wouldn't say fat, but she did gain weight when the later seasons. But mm-hmm. uh, which I think is stupid because like to me is reality though i mean think about it each season they were older like even in the show so it makes mm-hmm. sense because mm-hmm. think about it, if you look at season four raven eddie and chelsea versus season one that's with hannah montana all these shows that all they all gained a little weight they all look a little bit more mature because you're growing up is it, that's why you make these shows for us you know but i just think it's crazy that the message that the episode that they were talking about in particular that you know the the, the message they were putting out about loving yourself, loving the body that you're mm-hmm. in. You guys were doing that to her. You know what I'm saying? I just feel like that's kind of messed up, though. A lot of shows have that issue. Um, there was a Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the the spinoff called Angel. Cordelia Chase was one of the main characters, and she got pregnant. And she said that when she got pregnant, she started gaining weight, and they fired her because mm-hmm. of the weight gain. And she still, to this day, cannot forgive the director who was, or the, the not the director, I'm sorry, the creator of the show, which is Josh, the whoever created the Avengers, um, Josh, mm-hmm. whatever, I can't think. But yeah, mm-hmm. so but it happens in a lot of TV shows. Um, a lot of women are more held to the fire about their weight gain than yeah, men. I think also, too, it also stated that she <clears throat> had two breast reductions. They made her get two breast reductions in season yeah. two. I mean, Josh, she has some big old boobies, honey. I but she said that was to help puppies. her. She said that was because of her back issues that she got it. I don't know if that's true. No, no. Remember- she said she said her and her dad, may he rest in peace, that was if people had notice or whatever and it became like a big thing, that was an excuse that they were going to have. Back issues? And JT, yeah. JT is a Disney Channel fan, so he's going to know the truth. Yeah. He knows Raven himself. <laughs> Raven Simone Christina Perman, born December 10th in Stone Mountain, Georgia. I told Lock you, your growing, up, gro- growing up, growing up, no, no, growing up, I'm telling you, I told you, growing up, growing up, it was um, Janet Jackson, Ashanti, and Raven, and Lisa Ray. I was crazy about them growing up. Lisa Ray's random. I always thought she was, yeah, you know, she, my, she thought my any first of those movie. categories that they're in. It's really random, very random. <laughs> the first movie I saw with her was a Players Club, and I was a little so, boy. Well, we know I chose the horn ball. <laughs> yeah. So that was all I needed to know. But yeah, I can't get down behind Lisa Ray. I like her as a person, but I can't get her I can't get her. No, I didn't say it. I, I like her. I just can't. I'm not oh. like that. Um, I know people are scared of her. I don't know. She just don't give me. I, I'm not that Get her. big fan of her. Yeah, they, I guess she. Well, I'm gonna say, girl, I, I, the baby, she whoops ass, honey. I was, I was gonna, gonna say, gonna I say, heard you say, so I was gonna say, she gonna let you know what time it is. Dollar bill. I about to say, remember the the uh, the brat was on the uh, thing. I don't give what y'all saying. And she was going off on the what? That's a show. Her. Claudia, Vivica, yeah, and, um, Selena, Selena. She was letting them have it, boy. She was letting them mm-hmm. have it. But yeah, I was yeah. like Lisa Ray. But my favorite role will always be single ladies, though. That's my show. I mean, it's, it may be time for me to binge that again, actually. Yeah. He's a very nostalgic person, if you guys can't tell. Very much so. Follow me on Hear Me well, Out they Podcast. Know. They, we've been doing this for two years. They know. Yeah. yeah. They, they know us by now. I because, yeah, I, I was us. about to say, yeah. I feel like, I don't know. I just can't. A lot of new stuff, I just really just cannot get with. Like, to me, I'd rather, and honestly, if you look up the uh, analytics behind Netflix, Hulu, and all these streaming services, majority of the older stuff has a high peak in views opposed to the new material that they put mm-hmm. out because people just like nostalgia. I'd rather watch something that I know for a fact is good that I'm not wasting my time watching than to try to watch something. Like, even promise I just finished the Menendez story and it was good. You know, I'm not gonna lie it took me a minute to get through it, but honestly, I forgot I watched it today until I was talking to my aunt. And I literally just finished the last episode yesterday. Mm-hmm. Like How many, nothing, how many seasons? It's only one season, nine episodes. Uh-huh. See what I mean? Ooh. Like, and that's the thing. A lot of I feel like now too, a lot of things have gotten shorter. Like sh- shows. Like think about it. We had that's a Raven and all that. Keep in mind, even though they were sitcoms, we had like 27, 32 episodes in one season. You know what I'm saying? But like now, each show has eight episodes. 
like I love Abbott Elementary. That's one of my now, now that is one of my new favorite one of my favorite new shows, but eight episodes a season. Mm-hmm. No, you know what I'm saying? it's like, I mean, eight, it's like you know? House of the Dragon. Yeah, it's only eight for Abbott. I want to say the now I think they said going mm-hmm. forward is about to be like short like that. I think the earlier like the first two seasons were like. Maybe like 10, 15? No, like the first season was short. I think the second season got f- a full length. But because went, of the like, writer's strike, the writer's strike affected the third season. Right. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I didn't know they only got 10. Wow, 10. But think about it, though. What show now really is going 20 some episodes in the. In well, all season. the ones on cable. So, every cable show, NBC, it's all the streaming episodes, all the streaming shows that are cut to the 10 episodes. Sorry, guys. Mm-hmm. That was so rude. On the on the <laughs> nef, on the cable shows, the NBC and ABCs, they have to have the TV mm-hmm. shows running from fall to summer. So they're going to have the twenty two episodes, but it's all the streaming shows. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Abbott Elementary only having so little. Yeah, because um, they, they, I was going to say they, they're an actual sitcom show. Right. Yeah, interesting. interesting. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised because they do do back back black sitcoms thirty, so I wouldn't be that surprised. Mm-hmm. Um, but hmm. <clears throat> Tim Ari. Um, he sure. has a reality show called uh, Tia Mori, My Next Act, and the first episode premiered last Friday. Um, she revealed in the first episode that her ex-husband, um, oh my god, his name's going blank in my mind, Corey, oh, Corey. Cor- thank you, Corey, was her first love, her first boyfriend, and she lost his, her virginity her to Corey. Everything. I have the video clip. Take a look. Partner. You know I've never dated. That's right. I have never dated. <laughs> Corey was my first. Right. Yes, everything i know so i wasn't even allowed to date until i was 18 years old i met Corey when i turned 20 and i lost my virginity at 25 there was that it <laughs> and then we got married boom well <laughs> i think it's really really cute that tia is actually entering this new stage in her life where she can actually date more than one person. She only dated Corey and only had sex with Corey, and that's all she knows. And it must be scary for her to go back into or to go into the dating pond. But I also think that it's it's exciting for her as well because she probably will find out new things about herself um, that she likes and doesn't like. If that makes sense. Yeah. How cute. I feel like I do. I do feel like people get it misconstrued. I feel like when people see, you know, I talk to you about this all the time because I know, you know, we talk about relationships and stuff. People, I, I wish people would understand and grasp the understanding that dating is not about, well, obviously you're getting to know new people. It's more so about finding out who you are, you know, finding out things that you, that, that, that you, that you like, things, you know what I'm saying? Like, so to me, I, 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 obviously I hate seeing, a, a, especially a black couple break up. They had two beautiful kids together and stuff, you know, that, that is sad. But, you know, I'm excited to see, like, you know, because she's very talented. Actually, and, and pretty, pretty. And beautiful. Mm-hmm. my god, yeah. and she can dress, you know. Like, I'm excited to see different things that she's gonna because Tia is definitely the fun twin for sure. She don't <laughs> want to be outside, she'd be outside. <laughs> Tamara is definitely in Napa drinking wine in the house with that. Wife. I'm sorry, with that man. I think that they're both fun, they just have different two types of fun, um, right? The fun that you and I are talking about will probably be, be more Tia. Um, yeah, but I think that they both are fun. But I, I, I wonder if she will ever get married again, having mm-hmm. only one boyfriend. Um, Not gonna hold I, you. I see hmm. it. You I do see it. because, like, one thing I've, I've noticed about all those Maury's, it's not like they're all very family oriented. They don't. And I, you can tell that all of them were raised. They're not. None of them are perfect. None of us are. But they definitely give me. They were definitely raised with mores and values, though. So mm-hmm. I don't see Tia as one of those girls out here just sleep acting like you know early seasons of how melanie was acting on the game i don't see her out, out here just you never everybody. know when you're locked mm-hmm. away that's why a lot of shelter kids when they go to college or move out they actually act up because they're they're not in a box anymore but see so here's she- the thing though i feel like with that though i mean obviously we don't know the one of their marriage but it didn't give that all these years she felt like she was in prison in her marriage and well stuff. no she <laughs> did say in the episode so I didn't I didn't send you the whole entire clip. So she said that it seemed like she was happy. And are you having other audio on the show? Oh, I'm not. I'm not, 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 not <laughs> you are testing my patience today, Pinky. All right. <laughs> oh, oh my God, not Pinky. Not Pinky. You got me on that one because I don't have a prepared read back. You go Listen. ahead, Wayne. You Listen. better win. Um. 
I, I forgot what Lee was saying. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. Uh, she done read me down. Huh? <laughs> that she done read me down and forgot what you were talking about. I did. Oh, I me. forgot. Me. I forgot. I was saying. Um, I don't know. I'm excited to see where T is going to go with her love life. Well, he was saying um, about morals and values, and you were kind of piggybacking off of that. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Out. Um, yeah. Good luck to you. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I, was say, I just thought it was very interesting. You know, for of course she wasn't allowed to date until she was 18. They met when they were 20, but she held her virginity until 25. So that means they dated five years without having sex. And I'm not really like a hornball or anything like that, but I'm like, but to imagine. Like, I done had some, uh, well, um, well I, I can say this on the podcast, you said first, um, some good dicks, you know, in my time frame, and just imagining just one, like, oh my God, I was like, girl, wow, because what if his dick is little, <laughs> or what if it's not good, or what, I mean, you know, on top of the dating pool, like, of course, she, she like JT said, has morals and values, but whoever busts it wide open after that, girl, Call me to you. I can consult. Just tell them to send the dick pics to me, and I can approve. In our 30 years of living, real quick, what's y'all body count? Or if, mm. or if you don't know the exact number, is it over 10, <laughs> under 10? Mine is four. Oh, never mind, guys. This was an amazing episode. Thank you guys so much for the well birthday wishes. I'm going to have a See, really I was gonna good say, time. This is why me, 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 me and Marcus are lovey dovey. Because, bitch, huh? Body count one. Honestly, two. yeah, okay. I've 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 only had relations with in, mm-hmm. when I was in relationships. I've never hooked up. I've That's never, precious. yeah. Well, mm-hmm. I'd say this. I told you this, JT, that mm-hmm. you know when I did hook up, you know I always hooked up hoping for to fall in love, and unfortunately, uh-huh. and they unfortunately in the gay community, um, some gays you know think that hooking up will hooking up for the first time will get you to a date when it's just so backwards and yeah. maybe in you know when i started having sex in my late teens and early 20s you know that's that's the method that i was taught by the gay community and i you know acted you know in that act so you know i always thought that i was going to fall in love every time i hooked up with somebody and um you know it, until it, it, until later in my life you know i started slowing down and landing relationships and that's when um i stopped hooking up on my first meet. Well, honey, I had a whole phase. And Me too. I, I ain't gonna lie to you. 10 might have been in 60 days. <laughs> so, uh... I JT? It. Oh. <laughs> oh. So, but I'm testing his patience. You see how I get done around here? I was gonna say. <laughs> mm, call me Kiarna. I can come back with a flute next year. How about you, Robin? The, um... But yeah! I can hold my flute. You said you're the whore. Can you hold your flute? <laughs> <laughs> I can hold mine. <laughs> <laughs> the food <My> is flat. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I was gonna say no. I mean, I just come in, you know, just not not that you know one. I'm like not shaming one or the other, but you know, clearly, like you said, JT, clearly they were brought up with some form of you know, kind of self respect and morals and you know values and stuff like that so you don't have sex you know until you know you have some form of emotional right. connection you know with someone or you know you don't do certain things you know unlike the rest of us heathens um <laughs> so yeah that's what I'm saying all right come on now new wig who this oh you gotta lay down your edges I got you did you get your that's little band no, I was say, I you think- could, oh you put good concealer on your hairline this time L- bitch, l- let's see your ball spot. <laughs> we'll take off the hat. Let's see the ball spot on your head. Let's see your hair receding. Yeah, pull, pull, it's, it's, pull it off. Pull it off. Pull it off. So when you bad. have a length like mine, we can bad. talk. We can talk. Okay. We have lengths like mine. Say, she got, Until girl, then, she got, she anyone, got everyone in. bald? Everyone bald? It's a, it's, Silence. She got Silence. Everyone. It's a wig. Pull it. Pull it. I don't need a wig, sweetie. Pull it. I have that good hair. I have that good hair. All right. Pull the front. You have that nappy pussy hair. I have the good <laughs> hair. Let's pull, talk that. Well, the front. I was gonna say, as you see, you see light skin versus dark skin colorism. Go ahead. Oh. See, we would be the ones that you can't sit beside each other in class because they be talking about social issues and shit. Like, girl, this is some bullshit, girl. I don't like the bitch because I just don't like her, not because she's fucking uh, light skin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I was gonna say. What a day! What a, what a show! Skin. 
Yeah, that was the episode. I think we covered all the topics. Oh, yep. mm-hmm. uh, wait. Uh, what about... Uh, so, Spirit Airlines recently... Oh, yeah. Okay. Kicked, you want to cut, cut that? No. Go, go ahead. You already started. Go ahead. I was going to say, so recently, Spirit Airlines kicked off two ladies who... Um, apparently were against their dress code of wearing crop tops when one of those, um, all out of the male flight attendant feeling uncomfortable. Um, I mean, I've seen people in the airport, you know, with athletic, you know, wear and things of that nature on. I mean, I feel like spirit definitely has bigger issues, um, you know, than people on the planes with crop tops. Um, you know, you had a lady on there with a plate of crab legs. (laughs) You know, (laughs) so I'm like, tomato, tomato, potato, potato. You know, they really don't have the strongest, um, how can I say, like, I guess, image, you know, and being a respected uh, member of the aviation, in the aviation industry. So I feel like this kind of just was, it was stupid. If we can really just use one word, it was dumb, you know, to remove someone based off of the flight attendant's uncomfort. Um, you know, so well, it also I mean, went it, against their dress code, spirits dress code. And, you know, when you purchase and this is for all the airlines, because this is the yeah. first time that someone got kicked off for their uh, parents, for their physical appearance. When mm-hmm. you purchase your tickets for all the airlines is to tell you what the dress code sh- they expect you to uh, be wearing when you come aboard their aircraft. And I just think that when you purchase tickets, it's a, for, for, we live in America, number one. We should be right. able to come. As long as you're not naked or exposing any of your body parts, you Agreed. should be fine with wearing sweatpants. You know, if you wear sweatpants and you are, what's that when you, a buddy pass, if you have a buddy pass, you're not allowed to wear sweatpants, FYI. There's a dress code for people who are on the buddy pass that you have mm-hmm. to dress appropriately in khakis or you can't wear jeans. But you so mean, basically business casual Yes, thank, thank you. I was okay. looking for the term. So basically, but it should be, it should really be rules when you purchase a, a, a plane ticket of how mm-hmm. they want Agreed. to appear. And these two women, um, they were kicked off the plane and not even refunded their money. So they lost right. their entire money for the tickets i mean because my thing is you're gonna make sure i don't have any flammables you're gonna make sure i don't have nothing that's gonna blow this motherfucker up but girl (laughs) you okay i might have hard nipples all right let me put on my little shawl and you know let it be they refused to do that too so they did have well no the girl did the girl did put on a in the video she did put on before they were put off she did put on kind of like a cover-up shirt um you know or something along those lines while the flight attendants were discussing now the one girl i did too see, late that's what they said yeah too late she did i mean well if i don't put some on bitch well, i'm on spirit and y'all <laughs> are not giving me that y'all are in the spirit to serve today so it's so the cheapest of the cheap okay you it. have a lot of nerves to even get, me, get me to, get me to where say, i'm going and y'all charge for everything on this bitch I was about to say they say you fly spirit you become a spirit so mm-hmm. well, I well they became past they became past spirits okay bitch. right you will not mark it. Just FYI, everyone, Marcus will not be on Frontier ever again. The, uh, no. <laughs> the tray was this little. What tray? The, the um, what is it? Like the serving tray that lets down in front of the, you sent us a picture of it. It was extremely little. No, I don't think I had a tray. I didn't, no, I didn't have a tray. There was no trays. There was no, oh. co- there was no snacks. I asked for a snack. They said, it's like, you know, they gave me like a, a, a card reader. I said, I got to pay for a snack. The fuck up? There is no, you can't recline your seats. Um, what else? Uh, no snacks. I can't recline. Oh, there's no chargers for your devices. Like I couldn't plug in my phone or anything. It's given, it's a, it's given the stage coach of fucking airplanes. Look, I was just like, what the fuck? I thought I was on Greyhound. What the fuck? Is there a bathroom? No! You have a Greyhound. What did um, what did Portia say on that woman union? Oh, not class. They're close. They close. <laughs> but for forty dollars, what do you expect? That's all I'll pay for my plane I, ticket I, for forty dollars. Yeah. So what do you expect? Um, and how and, and how long was the the flight that you were three taking? Hours, in? Two and a half or three hours. It was it was a long one because I felt yeah. every it was a cheap airline, so you felt every turbulence. Um, and mm-hmm. with no chargers and no water and snacks, it felt like it was like six <laughs> hours. I was miserable. Not so, but it was them handing you a card reader for. A, a damn bag of peanuts. Yeah, that's wild. I, said, I know y'all. I know y'all got something for people who pass out of need. And then 
I had, back there. She kept talk, every time I, I asked her a question, I kept asking her questions, you know, like, you know, where's the snacks or how do you recline your seat? She kept getting attitudes. If I'm supposed to, excuse me, I fly Delta and United. Excuse me. But this is, should just be, you know, all, even Southwest don't charge you for snacks. Come on. At least you can recline mm-hmm. your seats for Southwest. Um, but you know what? Like I said, flight, flights need to include when you purchase tickets, their dress code policy. So we don't have this mistake moving forward. That's Agreed. it. So what an episode, JT and Ahmad um, went over our time, but it was a fun episode. It's your birthday episode, your second birthday episode on the show. Um, Ahmad's next. Well, well, it's me and Ahmad, but we're two days apart. But yeah, so. Yes. I was going to say, that's why we're so unique. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely yes. the chill one out of the three. If that's what you are. <laughs> <laughs> a stiletto clean. Mm. Thank y'all, though. I have fun. This was fun. Well, I hope you enjoy your birthday tomorrow. I want Did the two you? of you to be safe and don't do anything crazy. Um, and I wish I was there. So, but yeah. no gangbang. Oh, no. No. Mm-hmm. Close your legs to all these men. None of them are married. Oh. <laughs> I hate that. <laughs> what? Don't worry about it. Well, we will talk to you all next Friday. Ama, <laughs> thank you so much for coming on. Uh, and we'll see you all next Friday. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.